Hello, everybody. <laughs> Lots of people are freaking out right now. <clears throat> We're going to talk a lot about today, about many things that are happening. One, 48 hours to go till we make history. And this becomes the hard, hardest asset in the world. In addition, we will uncover the mystery of who is Mr. Home 100. And again, I just look at data. I don't know who it is. Is it an exchange? Is it Hong Kong seeding their funds? Is it a sovereign wealth fund out of the Middle East? We'll break it all down using data. Okay, one day we'll find out, but we'll just have to see and speculate until then. We'll also look at leverage hunting. Bitcoin has literally shot up $2,200 in an hour after going down to hunt to the floor. We'll talk about that floor. Is it really a bull market floor? And what else? The destination of where we're going? And the next 48 hours will be amazing. So let's jump in. This one's called Mr. 100 Mystery. Shout out to Patreon as well. And the team behind me that make all this possible, Ionis Cluidus. James, you have the best content on YouTube. I love your Patreon. Thank you for being there. And uh, I'm very grateful to be in a position to do this. Bitcoin Only Playlist will be here afterwards. And we have two days to go. By the way, the date is now 4.19. Some people are talking 4.20. 4.20 has a special meaning. It's not a sailboat. It's something else. But we'll see if it happens on 4.19. Either way, 48 hours to go is not a lot of time. Now, let's look at the, the leverage hunting map. You can see here very clearly that big yellow line was down at $59,000. And that's exactly where we went to. Thank you, Patrick, for coming. Madness. It's so predictable. People thought we were out of the woods and it'd be a pre having run. Many thought that, but sometimes not everybody thinks the same thing. The opposite happens, and the market makers go hunting for liquidity. Now, the good news is only 90 million was liquidated in the last 24 hours, mostly longs. So, not too bad. 85.83 million on Bitcoin and 44 on Ethereum as well. So, that got hit too. Ah, <sighs> crazy times. Anyway, just the way this thing bounces, the volatility is wrecking people's heads. But that's what markets do. So remember, when you approach markets, leave your emotions at the door. Now, let's talk about the floor. Speaking of doors and floors, short-term holder cost basis historically has been the bull market floor for Bitcoin. We are in a bull market, and that short-term hold, of course, cost basis is now $58,500. Coincidentally, that's exactly where the leverage hunting went to today. Actually, let's check exactly how low Bitcoin went today on that dip. It went to 59.6, so 1,000 over. Sometimes it doesn't reach all the way down, but it's good to know that the floor is still intact. And if history repeats... That floor will remain the floor for this bull run. And of course, as the price goes up, short-term holders swap stuff around, that cost basis will increase as well. Now, the big news, and people are kind of both very interested and also some people are sick of it. And I've spoken about it a lot. There's some really interesting stuff happening. First of all, Mr. 100 just bought another 500 Bitcoin today. And there's a lot of people, uh, and they bought... <laughs> with 48 hours to go for the halving. And in 48 hours, if they continue to buy 500 Bitcoin a day, they'll be buying more than the Bitcoin issuance. One player. The question is, and hey, Linda, thank you for coming. Again, I am not a clairvoyant. I don't have a crystal ball, but I do have data. Let's look at this stacking, which is quite unusual. And we know it's an upbit cold wallet. Yes. But why is the behavior so regular? And remember, since the beginning of the ETFs, this wallet has stacked, on average, exactly 347 Bitcoin a day. Assuming ETF days only, by the way, because sometimes they buy on the weekends, whereas the ETFs only buy Monday to Friday, to Friday. But just making it look even, it's quite incredible. Now, let's break this down all we try to do is take out our little magnifying glass and figure stuff out, look at data, and come to a conclusion. So let me talk about why I think Mr. 100 is not an exchange, okay, for many obvious reasons. First of all, and again, I'll preface this with this, I could be wrong, but this stacking behavior is 
stacking behavior. It's not cold wallet behavior. I'll show you all in a minute. So there's a regular stacking habit. The buys accelerate as the price dips. It's very much like DCAS behavior. Um, purchases are in 100 Bitcoin increments. Nobody else does this. It diverges from typical patterns seen in other exchange cold wallets. I'll show you all the other exchange cold wallets as well. And indications suggest a nation state is accumulating Bitcoin. And this nation state is secretive to prevent the game theory onslaught. So if, imagine if it's something like Qatar or a Japanese pension fund or a Korean pension fund, and they <laughs> let the cat out of the bag, they've been stacking hard, that will cause a nuclear arms race. We know that that game theory is going to be triggered at some stage. The question is when. So these are the reasons I think this is not an exchange called wallet because of the regularity, the timing of the purchases and the sheer amount of purchases. But let's look at some other cold wallets just to give you a feel for how these cold wallets operate for exchanges. This is Binance. Again, very stable. There's no in and out. It's kind of nothing has happened in this Binance cold wallet since, what's that, December, November 2022? Stable as a rock. Let's look at Binance's second cold wallet. Stable as a rock since 2021. Let's look at Bitfinex cold wallet. Again, stable since December 2023. No movements, no movements at all. Let's look at Bybit cold wallet. A little bit of movement, but mostly stable. It is added a little bit, but sometimes it doesn't do anything for months and months. And do I have another wallet? No, I don't right now. So they are typically what exchange cold wallets do. This cold wallet, which is now the 11th largest Bitcoin wallet in the world, is doing something very unusual. We'll see. Now, I did mention this as well, just to talk about their stacking behavior. In the last week alone, Mr. 100, whoever it is, again, have stacked 2,032 Bitcoin in one week and over 8,000 in a month. All right. The deeper the dip, the bigger the buys. And we've seen that pattern happen as well. But that is a staggering amount of stacking. And that level of stacking is more over the last recent period for HODL 15 than BlackRock and Fidelity combined. So this is heavy, heavy stacking. This is not the way an exchange operates, especially when the markets go down. If this was kind of a liquidity buffer, it would be tapped into during these down markets, especially if it's an exchange that has leverage and everything else. So we'll see. We also have tons of other points of, you know, people like President Bukele meeting with heads of state in different Middle Eastern nations. We've seen private jets come from Qatar flying into the Bitcoin conference in Madeira or something a few weeks ago. Lots of little tidbits. So whoever it is in the Middle East, somebody there is obsessed with Bitcoin. Are they buying it? We will find out in time. Either way, a lot of people are stacking behind the scenes. And it's not just an ETF game as well, although the ETFs have had a large influence. And we'll break that down also in a minute. Now, speaking of ETFs, the Hong Kong ETFs, they are not trading for another 13 days. We know the approval happened on Monday this week. But just in from Bitcoin Magazine, they will be trading by 30th of April. And of course, per Bloomberg, could bring in 25 billion. I know people say that's not possible. But do not underestimate how much money there is in Hong Kong and China and how much they ag aggressively invest as well in different types of assets. And remember as well, this is the first halving we've ever gone into where Bitcoin is defined as a distinctive asset class, the 11th class of assets on the planet. So that's a big deal. And this is another interesting chart too. Just some perspective, these new ETFs have taken in 29 billion dollars in 66 days but planet earth is focused on 58 million draining out <laughs> yesterday um that is literally 0.2 percent of what has actually come in over the previous 60 65 days so again focus on the green box ignore the red box and there is so much fud out there right now people are saying oh the having will be a nothing burger remember bitcoin is an economic experiment. It interplays the discourse between the laws of supply and demand. All right, we're going to get a huge 
supply kick in the teeth in 48 hours, cut in half, all right? That will have an impact. How long it takes to filter through the system, we don't know. But if the buyers start coming and they start looking for Bitcoin, they're probably not going to find it, unless, of course, all the long-term holders are happy with $61,000 and they'll sell at that price. Either way, it'll go up. So we'll look at some charts later as well. Now, a little bit of perspective, too, because people, I mean, people, it's as if their memories only go back a week or two weeks. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of charts from Hey Apollo, which are really interesting. I'll flick through these real fast. But first of all, Bitcoin versus NASDAQ and how it's crushed it since 2012. Absolutely destroyed it. Bitcoin versus the Dow Jones, same thing, destroyed it. Bitcoin versus JP Morgan, yes, destroyed that as well. No wonder JP Morgan hate Bitcoin. Bitcoin versus Apple, destroyed it. But Apple held better than some of the other assets, uh, at least in previous years. It had some very strong years, 2016 and 2020, 2018. Can't quite read those numbers. Bitcoin versus the S&P 500, crushed it. Of course, there's dips there during bear markets where the Bitcoin gets hit, but Bitcoin always wins at the end of the day. Bitcoin versus real estate. Absolutely smashed real estate, probably more than any other asset. But remember, you can buy real estate on leverage, so that can save you as well. So from all of that, everybody, it is a powerful vehicle. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You just need to zoom out to get a feel for exactly where this thing is going. Now... This is staggering in fiat fun news. <laughs> Shout out to Vivek as well, who brought this to my attention. The Indian rupee in the last 10 years or nine years has fallen 99.6% against Bitcoin. 99.6%. Again, when you zoom out, <laughs> thank you, Linda. When you zoom out and get a feel for exactly what this thing does, it would terrify anybody into never holding fiat. And by the way, the Indian rupee is not the worst currency on the planet by no stretch of the imagination. But that's more interesting perspective. Okay, let's look at the ETF charts real quick. And then we'll look at a whole bunch of TA charts too. A little bit of on-chain stuff to get us a, give us a feel of where we are right now. First of all, day 66, raw numbers. I left the white blank there to show you that there were two days where literally none of the ETFs, with the exception of BlackRock and Grayscale, had any action. But fortunately, the other ones came back. Fidelity came back yesterday, small amount, uh, and some other names that have been quiet for quite some time, like Vanek, etc., uh, Wisdom Tree, they're all back in the game. Small amounts, but not too bad. Nice to see them having some action. That's positive ahead of the having. ARC did dump 12.9 million. Not sure why. It could be Kathy. I haven't had a chance to dig into it. it. Could be Kathy dumping to buy something else like Tesla, which is on sale. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. But net net, 57.6 million did. No, sorry. Yeah, 57.6 net did leave the system yesterday, which is not good. This is the macro view. Grayscale peaking up. BlackRock and Red peaking down and some of the other smaller names in the game as well. Money flow stays negative, not good, below that zero line. And total money flow out again, that 57.6 million. You can see the green line trend is really pointing down. The ETFs over the last 20 days have been very weak compared to the previous 46 days where they were very strong. So the first week or two was quiet. Then the middle of the zone was incredible. And that means people aren't sure the impact of this having. They need more comfort. They kind of want to sit back, find out what's going on in the macro geopolitical situation with Iran and Israel, and also what the having. We're not sure if it's a combination of reasons, but people are very skittish right now. Uh, but that being said, you can see very clearly that those that have the powder, <laughs> they're buying at these levels. Now, 36 billion has again gone into these nine new ETFs. Massive amount of money, uh, 530,000 Bitcoin in the new ETFs in 66 days. And the dumpage, grayscale dumpage, because this is the key thing. Once this thing is gone, this is going to be exciting because there'll be no constant supply of new Bitcoin coming in. Grayscale has contributed 
312,000 Bitcoin to the world and the new ETFs and other players and retail came in the last 30 days over the last 66 trading days. 312,000 Bitcoin, half of their bag gone. How much more can go? Again, 100,000. How long it'll take? Again, 60 to 90 days at this rate. We'll see, maybe less. But either way, the heavy dumpage days are definitely gone and we're staying above that pink trend line. I did get a bit nervous. I think it was day, blah, 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 two days ago. When we bounced right off that pink line, now we're back up again. So the heavy, heavy dumpage is gone. Which means the ETFs will have to seek out their Bitcoin and start calling the miners. And I got a super interesting miner chart coming up as well towards the end. Stay tuned for that. Now, net visual on where we are, 904 Bitcoin were added back to the system. This chart's getting so busy now over these 66 days. I, I've got to figure out a better way to compress all that data together. Anyway, you get the feel. Now, Mr. 100, whoever it is, just to put them in perspective, since these ETFs came around, are stacking 347 Bitcoin a day. Okay, BITB, 508. ARC, 660. And, you know, compare it to HODL, all the other guys. Mr. 100, whoever it is, maybe it is an exchange wallet, but I don't think so. I think it's definitely something, somebody stacking in a stealthy way so as not to trigger game theory. Either way, that's a lot, 347 a day. And over the last month, they've stacked a lot more than, again, uh, some of the other players combined. Now, let's look at some charts. A couple of cool ones here. Bitcoin is 61.8 as we speak. But this is interesting. I want to shout out to Josh as well. He shared this today <laughs> of the Bitcoin chart. And again, when Bitcoin dips, and it dipped right after the ETF's launch, people lose conviction. Okay, it dips again now. The people lose conviction. They get worried. They kind of lose interest. It's like they get kicked in the teeth and they want to walk away and play in another field. These are the times when you need to have your conviction. Okay, it's like the bottom of the bear market. Everybody's afraid. Everybody's miserable. Everybody's checked out. Everybody's away from learning about crypto. That's when the billions are made. So shout out to Josh for pointing this out. Literally, Price action goes down, people lose interest. And you know what happens next? Price will go up, and then people will watch it, and then it'll go up a lot. Maybe we get that $10,000 candle. And then, guess what? The conviction comes back. But that's not the time you buy. The time you buy is when everybody else is losing conviction. Simple lesson of life. Uh, now, another cool chart here. This is from Bitbo, Bitcoin. Uh, Giovanni, and this is the power law chart. You can see the green line is kind of the power law middle of the road. Red line is the floor, purple is the top. The important thing to know now with this recent dip, it actually got rejected perfectly off the power line. Now, if this power line is correct, and it has been correct with a very high degree of accuracy over the whole life of Bitcoin, if it continues to be correct, we could see a $100,000 Bitcoin in 2024, or it could scoot up to 378000 That's the top line from Giovanni on the power law of Bitcoin. So we'll see. Again, red line support uh, right now is about 36 k But as I mentioned earlier, we have that new support band, which is historically in bull runs, about 58500 which is the short-term holder cost basis. Either way, focus on the green line okay ignore the noise now there's another beautiful chart as well from milky bull crypto and at the bottom you have the rsi ready to break out basically bitcoin was very very oversold this morning on any measure i look at mean reversion it was bonkers but per this this is the macro perspective of where we are going next again RSI oversold, we will rebound. Short-term holder cost basis also, they have listed here as 59,000. I have it as 58,500. That is typically bull market support. And it's nice to see this perfect setup. All right, we've got that short-term holder, short holder cost basis and the RSI ready 
to break out. So this is, as Mr. 100 sees, a big opportunity for accumulation, which normally brings about big returns. Now, if we go back to the halvings, 2012 halving, after the halving, 10,000% uh, profit. 2016, after the halving, 3,000% profit. And last time in 2020, 700% is what Bitcoin went up after. This time, considering where we are, say 60K, a fraction of 700%, two and a half, three, three X, with 250, 300%, many people believe is possible. That takes us to bonkers numbers. We don't know if that's gonna happen this time around, but what is different is the adoption is higher. The knowledge is higher. The need for Bitcoin is higher and Bitcoin is now its own asset class for the first time in the history of the world and the ETFs are here too. So let's look at one other cool chart as well and let me know below a lot of people are asking me for a minor update. I can do a quick one today but I can't do my huge one because I don't have 8 to 14 hours to crunch numbers. However, you can see here what is super interesting is the number of Bitcoin mined versus the Bitcoin sold by the top five miners in the market. Names like Marathon, CleanSpark, Riot, Cypher, etc. Core Scientific. What's interesting is green is the Bitcoin mined. Look at the right-hand side, that's Q1 2024. And the black is the amount that they sold. Okay, stunningly enough, they mined. These top five public miners mined 8,100 Bitcoin, and they only sold 2,000. We know for a fact these miners represent actually about 20% of all the mining that happens in the world happens with public miners. And these top five miners represent about 14, 12% of that 20%. So 80% of the mining is happening in the other parts of the world, privately, nation states, flare gas mining, hydro mining in different parts of Africa, etc. What are they doing with the Bitcoin? That's the question. Are they selling to or are they holding? If, if they are holding, this thing is super scarce and about to get a lot scarcer. And again, let me know if you want me to do a quick update on Bitcoin miners. I can do that later. Some very interesting stuff has come up. Thank you all. We will all find out one day who Mr. 100 is. And I'm excited. But I don't think it's an exchange. We know Arkham said it's up at exchange. It's too regular. It's too like clockwork. It's too DCAS. It never dumps. It only buys in $100 increments. Today, $500. $8,000 in the last 30 days. That's unusual behavior. So, we'll see. Open to be proven wrong. Let me know if we are. But hopefully, that will put the Mr. 100 mystery to rest. Somebody out there is stacking. We just don't know who it is. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you to the mods in the chat, D&D, Tesla, and K8, and everybody else. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.